So we had like every square hit on this one except the ones that would mean bingo. So there was like <laughs> Chris- <laughs> Christmas tree decorating, ice skating, uh, gingerbread house decorating, Christmas market, fake hot beverages, friends to lovers storyline. everybody. We're the Good Doctors of Abbey Research. I'm Dr. Kristen. And I'm Dr. Erin. And you are exceptionally welcome to our holiday coverage. This year, 2021, we are picking four new holiday extravaganza movies from mm-hmm. both Lifetime and Hallmark and talking about them the way that we have talked about them in the past, except we're hoping that we picked a better crop than some of the ones that we have uh, suffered through in the past. Looking at you, Dolly Parton. Oh, um, Christmas around the square. It was not pleasant. It was not pleasant. But good news. No. Today's is super pleasant. We are discussing Hallmark's 2021 Boyfriends of Christmas Past, which aired in November sometime because, of course, yeah. it did. Yeah. So it's available on demand or probably playing in the Hallmark universe right now because of how often (laughs) they replay their new movies. This one was shot entirely in Ottawa and our uh, Canadian correspondent, Jay, actually got to see some of the live filming a few times. She sent us pictures back in the summer. So the whole time I was watching this, I will say, I just kept thinking, oh, wow, it was really hot. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. They filmed this in August. (laughs) We got, like, digital snow for the first time oh. in a Hallmark movie, and it was oh God. so bad. That one, the, the, the scene with the zip line was terrible. But was anyway. so bad. We digress. Boyfriends of Christmas Past um, stars two leads that we have not seen before. I know. And both are people of color. A Korean family. Um, casual, you know inclusivity as we kind of went around everything. Um, Although if I'm pressed, I wouldn't say that anything besides the Korean is inclusive. Um, But there's definitely so much just, I felt like I was watching a Korean family celebrate Christmas that I really deeply appreciated it. Yeah. Um, The plot is, is simple. Lauren is a career girl who is, uh, who has one of the world's hottest best friends. Oh my um, God. Who from the, minute we meet him is in love with her so girl um and she's being dumb with him and so in order to move her along in her relationship (laughs) with hot with hot best friend her boyfriends of christmas past come to haunt her a la scrooge and show her the lessons that she should have learned that she didn't and of course at the end we get a happily ever after so it's Lauren and Nate. Nate is hot best friend, although I will absolutely probably just refer to him as hot best friend. Chocolate um, eyes is what I am calling him. Because could he be in literally every single could ever right now? I actually forgot to write down his actual name. So I will Google that while Dr. Aaron tells you her thoughts and feelings about this film. I would be delighted to. Yeah. Um, so it's it's got a lot of our favorite... Um, holiday movie tropes in this one. I thought it was a damn delight uh, from start to finish. I actually laughed out loud. It was a pretty darn good script. Um, There's jokes about, like, she always has Nate take the selfies, and he's like, oh, you just love me for my long arm. You're just using me for my long arms, which made me laugh so hard because one of Dr. Kristen and I's best friends, Mark, takes all our selfies because he has long arms, and we were like, this is, yes! Uh, also, iPhones are made for male hands, but that's a, a different conversation for a different day. Um, but the jokes were really funny. Um, mm-hmm. Their chemistry, I thought, was really good. Uh, the two of them. Whose names they- are Catherine, Hannah Kim, 
And Raymond Ablak. Love it. Thank you. So Catherine and Raymond. Catherine and Raymond. Uh, Lauren and Nate in the film. Yeah, I mean, the it's one of those things where uh, I was, we were saying offline before we started filming, it's the pendulum swing of diverse, diverse casting, diversity casting from Hallmark. Like, they went so long with just all white folks that they went, they pendulum swing to where there's, like, no white folks. And I'm like, well, that's not realistic, y'all. I mean, the the, the gay um, friends, the couple friend, um, are two white men. The best friend and her husband are white. But in terms of, like, the first meeting in the boardroom, Lauren works for this marketing company along with her best friend. And they're sitting around the boardroom and... Like, we've got diverse age, we've got an old Asian man, we've got an older black lady at the table, we've got two young Asian ladies, including Lauren, two white ladies, and then the boss of the whole marketing firm is a white lady. And I just kept watching, every time they were in the marketing firm, I was like, there are no white dudes that work here. And, like, statistically, we know that's bull. Um, So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, Hallmark, we see you. Um... And maybe they'll pe- the pendulum will swing back into the middle and it'll just stay, but I doubt that it will. Um, but yeah, I loved the the casual inclusivity of um, the Korean aspects of celebrating Christmas. Uh, and I, you know, my mom was walking through the living room at one point while I was watching it, and I was like, "Look, I was like, Mom, apparently non-white folks celebrate Christmas all the time. <laughs> what?" Hallmark. Um, so I really appreciated that it was done in a way that I felt it wasn't like being made a trope or being like, obviously, look, we have Asian folks, you know, it wasn't stereotypy. It was just, these are humans who celebrate Christmas and they are Korean Americans and they have different traditions. Um, so there was a great joke about, uh, this sweet bean paste, that is, like, used in all Korean food, and she just, like, she's, like, sweet bean paste is, like, Nutella for Koreans, and I was, like, inclusivity, food, and, you know, not making, like, a big, yeah, and then sh- the, shining deal out of it. There's a couple things that they didn't even explain, which I really yeah. loved, too. It's, like, well, they, she's making bibimbap, and she has the kimchi, and we're gonna bring soju, and those are all things that we've encountered in other, you know, in our explorations of, uh, South Korea during our colonizers world tour. But I absolutely know people that would have had to Google that. And I love that. I love that there was no hand holding because they assumed that Koreans would be watching this as well. It wasn't like this movie about Koreans made for white folks. Right. Yeah. That's such a great point too. And I didn't even think of it. Um, But yeah, because obviously if it's a, a, a Korean American father and his Korean American daughter, and they're having a conversation about Christmas, they're not going to explain what they're talking about in terms of soju, which I didn't know what that is, assuming it's an alcoholic beverage. Yeah, it's Um, flavored alcoholic. uh, It's flavored liquor. Cool. Um, And yeah, they didn't explain it. Or in a lot of ways, what they would have done in the past is like, they would have had a white person come in and say like, oh, I don't know what that is. What is that? To be like the translator. Um, But I, I give them credit. Uh, This is a really good point that I hadn't thought of until you brought it up, but I give them credit for just, like, saying stuff. Yeah. All in all, I think this is one of those that could have been closer to uh, a movie I would watch in a in a theater oh, closer sure. to a rom-com there yeah. was we discussed it it needed probably two more rounds of a writer's rooms edit it needed like so the info dumps were still info dumpy Big they time. were still really clunky they were more natural than some of the other times we've seen in hallmark like i can totally see nate and lauren and nate being like man i can't believe i've been running this place for a year but yeah. he delivered it info dumpy like yeah so because this is one of my things side side tangent Side (laughs) dramaturgical tangent with Dr. Kristen. I don't think that all info dumps are bad because we even do it in friendships. All the time. All the time. We just put emphasis on different syllables. And so it's easier to, you can sell an info dump. There are times, even last night I landed and my friend Cheryl texted me and goes, I can't believe your virtual showcase was this year. I was like, I know. And if we were in a, in a rom-com, it would have, people would have been like, oh, thank you for letting us know that this very pivotal event happened this year. But that yeah. was also just Cheryl and I talking about how crazy my year has been. Right. So 
there's ways to do it, but the way the actor, the way that Raymond delivered it was a little info dumpy. And so what? they they didn't really massage some of the info in like background context as much as they could have. Um, and then there was a, th- a gag with a, ha- a hat at the beginning yeah. that they just let kind of die. And it could have been a really good through line to the conclusion. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of stuff like you often, this is why nothing gets written alone. You often need like two or three eyes or brains or whatever to connect that kind of thing. But um, so, you know, another couple rounds, probably another two weeks that they would have been allowed to write this thing. <laughs> Since they churn these so fast. So um, and fast. this could have absolutely been released in a theater. It was. Yeah. Um, and a little bit more time for uh, Catherine to work on some of her facial expressions. Um, which which she didn't. She couldn't. She didn't. I'm going to guess didn't get the chance. Because again, these they film these things in like six weeks. Start to finish. So fast. So fast. Um, to really work on how she would have wanted to react to a very pivotal um, uh breakup scene in a way that um was not she she took a little bit more like not as traumatic as we needed to believe it was yeah um but other than that no criticisms i know um uh i think the last thing that remains is to see if we won bingo one one bingo got bingo from our good doctor's holiday movie bingo card which if you don't have it uh, every time you watch one of these, it will be a downloadable version below um, for you to play along uh, with us in the ones that we're covering in the coming weeks or just on your own for, for shits and giggles. So we had like every square hit on this one except the ones that would mean bingo. So there was like <laughs> Chris- <laughs> Christmas tree decorating, ice skating, uh, gingerbread house decorating, Christmas market. Fake hot beverages, friends to lovers storyline, second chance, no, not a second chance. It's not a second chance, no. Heroin in a red dress in the final scene. Always. Um, like, character tells a story from the childhood. All of this stuff. Um, but we were missing, like, in one, we were missing a royal heir. Yeah, there was no royalty, no secret heir. In another one, we were missing the character returns to, uh, returns home to a small town, missing that one. Um... Another one we were missing was main character solve a mystery or an adventure. So we hit, a, we had like bingo, the, almost the whole board, except what we would actually need to win bingo. Um, oh wait, no, yeah, no, we can't even do four corners because um, we don't have a, a royal heir or a stranded uh, traveler plot. So though the bingo was unsuccessful, the viewing was successful. It is uh, a trope fest. It is a trope fest, but... As I said at the beginning, a damn delight. So if you have the chance to catch it on the on demand or one of its 85 re-airings between now and Christmas Day, we can highly recommend Boyfriends of Christmas Past. If you enjoyed it as much as we did, we'd love to hear it in the comments. Um, Or if you didn't, we'd love to know why, because this is one that actually we both universally enjoyed. So we always like to hear some differences of opinion. If you like our holiday coverage or you found this conversation delightful, we have talked about a lot of holiday movies and we're going to talk about a whole lot more. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell, the notification bell to always so you don't miss a single conversation uh, in a way far too analytical deep dive into a Hallmark movie that it was never it was never meant to stand up to such analysis but um but damn just, it we're gonna keep trying but god damn it we're just gonna keep going in the meantime we hope indeed that none of your boyfriends from past come back to uh interrupt your sleep but that you definitely get to enjoy whatever holidays look like for you however joy exists for you we hope that you get to uh experience that we'll see you next time bye everybody